Hey everybody, welcome back. If you haven't been here before, my name is Mary. Now today we're going to talk books with romance books with groveling. Uh, I love a good grovel. I really, really enjoy it when, you know, that's the only time I enjoy it, I think, when the hero does something he shouldn't, cheats or whatever, is when the the woman really makes him grovel um, to get back in her good graces. So as you know, I was waiting on Suzanne Robinson's Lady Gallant. Um, obviously it came. I did read it. It wasn't really what I expected. Um, writing wise I mean it was kind of tough for me at times because it was written um, with them a lot of the ways through the book talking again like you would in that time period so I think because I hadn't read a book um, like that in a while I kind of struggled in places but as for groveling yes there was a good grovel um, I enjoyed the book I really liked Nora um, again in the book she is a spy um, for the crown and so is Christian the love interest um, they meet she's kind of a mouse um, you know she's not beautiful or any of those things but you know Christian likes her and he's a womanizer but he sees her as in romance you know and he wants to be with her so he does end up marrying her um, but then he thinks misunderstandings and all of that, that she is um, a spy for the other side, basically. He thinks she is deceiving him. So then he goes to do some really um, stupid stuff. And I have to tell you that to me, Christian came off in the book as kind of dumb. You know, I'm just like, there's times I like, when he cheated on her, well, he didn't go all the way. Um, what he did was, there was a lady named Mags, and she was like a prostitute in that time period. But he brought her to their home. I mean, he humiliated her, absolutely humiliated her. It was terrible. Um, then he takes her up to a room where he knows that Nora will hear him in there with Mags. And, of course, Nora gets up and she goes and she sees him in bed with Mags. And he, of course, that was his plan all along. So he jumps out of bed with this woman, and this is where it like, had to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard um, in a book as to the reason why he did it, is he goes up to her, you know, he's still, you know, she's the, the woman's still in the bed there, and he like traps her against the door and he said, you know, that could be you if you just admit, um, give me the information that I want, I'll come back to your bed. And so his thinking through all of this was that Nora would see him with this woman and then want to be with him again. That would like turn her around and say, okay, I want to be with you. I don't want you to be with her. You come to me. And I'm like, you know, Women don't work like that, do we? <laughs> it's like, and it didn't work with Nora. You know, Nora, um, that was a turning point for her where uh, she finally just said, I've had enough. You know, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. Um, she went through a little breakdown, but then once she she got her bearings back, she, she really uh, put it to him. Um, she did not forgive him easily because eventually he found out that he was wrong. Um, Nora was not a spy. She was not deceiving him and and all of this and you know he because he he really liked her he loved her but his reasoning that she was going to come in and see him in bed with this prostitute and she was going to be like no no don't do that you come to me you know come back to me you know was just probably one of the dumbest um reasonings but again Chris, christian came off as kind of to me kind of dumb throughout the book you know at times i'm just like surely he's not that stupid you know, that think that Nora would, um, would fall for that, but, and she didn't. And so she did, did, did make him work. This was a grovel. She did not forgive him easily, and he worked for it for a long time. Um, she just left and, just, you know, see ya, <laughs> I'm done. 
And uh, yeah, she should have, because he really humiliated her and uh, his actions were just awful, absolutely awful. So, but overall, it was a good book. Not quite what I was expecting, but again, it was released in 1991. So it is a, uh, one of our little classic romances here. Um, but I did enjoy it. I laughed a lot, and I don't, that's the thing. I don't know if I was supposed to be laughing, but some of the stuff uh, in this book really cracked me up. So some of the language and just things, you know, and Christian's just stupidity at times and his reasoning on how to deal with the women. Yeah, because um, there were more than that, like, you know, thinking he could give her a puppy and she would just be, you know, over the moon for him again and all these other things. Just his reasoning with women, and I know I'm confusing you, but... It's, it's really hard to explain this book, or explain Christian. You know, Christian de Rivers, that's his name in the book. And then you had Nora Beckett. Um, again, Nora was very bright. Um, and at times she did have her low points where she would break down. I'm like, eh, pick it up, girl, you know. <laughs> just let it go and just leave. Um, but she did good. And I really liked where she tricked him. Like... She wanted to get away from him, but she didn't really want to leave where she was. So she just hid. She had people help her and she hid in the, their home. And so he thought she had left. And so he left to go find her. You know, he went back to London and here she is just staying in the countryside and never have left the premises. Um, it was great. It was really great. I love Nora. So I will say that. And she did make him work for it. So. Yes, this was a grovel and it was a good one. Just not, the writing wasn't quite what I expected. So I did enjoy that. Um, so then again, I'm on the groveling kick now and I read that and I'm like, okay, let's see what else I can find. I will go Google grovels, for, you know, in romance novels and you will get like a huge list. Um, but at the top of the list is the, on, the unwanted wife by Natasha Anders. Now, I have seen this one, but, you know, when I read the, the reviews, it seems kind of depressing. You know, I'm like, I don't know if I want to read where, you know, he does all these things, you know, um, but I did. It was Kindle Unlimited, and I said, why not? So, last night, I read it. Um, I just buckled down and said, I'm going to read this, um, and I'm going to see what it's all about, because again, it's the number one grovel, it um, always comes up right at the top. So this is about, it is contemporary um, romance, and it's got, you have, you have Teresa and Alessandro, um, which she calls him Sandro. Um, he does meet her, and he likes her, but there's some misunderstandings, as always, and long story short, he is forced to marry her. She doesn't know he's forced to marry her, um, and so he takes it out on her. You know, he does things like um, flaunt other women, even though you find out in the book he doesn't, he has never cheated. So that was good because I worried about that. I didn't, wasn't going to like that at all because I've had enough of that, you know. So it was a complicated story. When he finds out, the only way he can get out of the marriage, according to Teresa's father, is if he fathers a son on Teresa. And of course, Teresa, again, didn't know any of this. All she knows is that Alessandro or Sandro always told her, I want a son after they were done, you know, with their business in the bedroom. Um, so anyway, she, he finds out that she didn't know anything about being forced into this marriage and that she did love him, genuinely loved him. And she um, thought they were married for love, but he treated her horribly. Um, I think 18 months is where the book starts. I mean, he never introduced her to his family. He had a love interest that he thought he was in love with before he, he loved her because he, he, he does love her. Um, but at the point where she finally says, I've had enough, there's a point where he finds out that she did not know anything about what her dad did. So long story short, um, she is pregnant, um, but she does want to divorce from him. She doesn't want to be married to him anymore. And so he really, because um, he does love her, he does really work for it. Um, 
through the rest of the book because she she again she's having none of it she still wants a divorce even though there's going to be a baby because that was the original plan anyway once she had a baby boy he was they were just going to go their separate ways even though she didn't know that um, at the beginning of their marriage um, she didn't find that out till 18 months in and again he treated her horribly um, not like abusing or anything like just mental mainly you know just wouldn't um, wouldn't kiss her, wouldn't touch her, wouldn't really look at her. Um, just awful, you know, things like that that really mentally um, hurt you. And, but yeah, it was a good grovel um, because she, um, she really didn't um, forgive him. Um, she just, and it, right up to the very end, and again, it was hard to like Alessandro too, because I didn't understand his reasoning until like the last chapter behind things that he did, even while he was trying to get back in her good graces. Because I'm like, well, why would you do that? Obviously, you don't really love her if you do that, but it all works out in the end. So if you have not read The Unwanted Wife um, and you want a good grovel, it is a good grovel. And it's not near as bad, because some of the reviews scare me, because I'm like, I don't want to read about, you know, after MC romances, I don't want to read about these jerks that really just screw around and sleep around and, you know, all, I don't want to read that. Um, so <laughs> that wasn't the case, you know, so, and again, this is, The Unwanted Wife is part of a three book series about, gro with grovels. You have A Husband's Regret, Regret and The Unlikely Lover all on Kimmel Unlimited. I've only read The Unwanted Wife because again, it's still kind of depressing when the whole book, you know, kind of fight, not fighting, but just fighting the, you know, with each other. So yeah. Um, I also read um, one called Ricochet. This was by Cole Lepley. Now this is contemporary. Um, I read it on Kindle Unlimited. It is fastball number one and it is college kids. Um, and I read that it had a grovel in it, and it did, but not, again, it moved really fast. Like, this was one of those, you know, within a week, they love each other and blah, 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 all of that. Um, he thinks she um, is cheating on him, so he goes and he cheats on her, and then he immediately regrets it when he knows he was wrong, and he pretty much falls into a um, pit of despair until um, he gets her back. So that was a fast scroll. Like it was a fast book. Um, literally read it in like two hours. So it was a fast book, but I still enjoyed it. So, and I have never read anything by her. I think she's an independent writer. And um, yeah, it was pretty good. So yeah, those are three of the grovels that I've read. And then on that list of groveling is also um, Susan Elizabeth Phillips, Kiss an Angel. Now, I saw it, and I didn't even realize I had the book. I picked this up at Goodwill a couple weeks ago, and I have them all on my desk because I haven't really went through them. I just pick up ones I don't have when I do go to um, thrift stores. So I actually have it. Um, it's got a different cover than what um, the new cover is, but same book. Um, again, I'm kind of scared on this one because they say that he's terrible to Daisy and that he doesn't do enough groveling and, but I'm going to read it anyway, you know, um, as long as he didn't cheat on her, which I, my understanding is he does not cheat. Cause again, I've had enough of cheaters. <laughs> Absolutely had enough of that. As I talked about, um, just don't want to deal with any more really depressing um, end of the stories where the guy doesn't say he's not going to cheat anymore. He basically says he's going to try. Um, don't like that. So I'm going to read this as long as he doesn't cheat on her. And I'm uh, review says he doesn't, but it's supposed to have a good grovel. So yay. Okay. I'm glad I just, I'm glad I just had it, you know, lucked out on that one. Cause it was like, I'd have to order it. It's not available um, on Kindle. So or it might be available on Kindle. Maybe it's the other one. There's another one someone recommended, um, The Ways of the Heart by Cheryl Holt. That one's not on Kindle. So that one I have to order. This one I could have got on Kindle, but yeah, I've got it by luck. Paid a dollar for it at thrift store. So then that got me to thinking, what is my favorite grovel that I have on my shelf? Well, I'm sure there are many, because again, Judith McNaught's good about, you know, having some 
groveling in her stories. So I think there's probably several of her books, but the one that always comes to mind for me when I think of somebody that was made to grovel is Joanna Lindsay's Prisoner of My Desire. Now, if you've read this, you know Rowena and Warwick. Um, and again, this is set in medieval times. So I really, and I've read this one several times, um, but he treats Rowena terrible. You know, he takes her as prisoner and on and on, but he treats her horribly. And boy, does she make him grovel whenever he finds out that he was wrong about her. I mean, she's already pregnant, but she leaves his castle and she goes off with her mother and her new husband and she makes him grovel. I mean, he comes to see her every day and she's, she will not see him right up until she has that baby. <laughs> you know, she's literally delivering that baby before she um, lets him back into her life. So that's one of my favorite grovels. I absolutely loved when Rowena made Warwick grovel. So, and if you've read this book, um, Princess, Prisoner of My Desire by Joanna Lindsay, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was a very good grovel. I enjoyed it because he deserved it. So that would be the one on my shelf that comes to mind, even though I know there's, there's many. But um, again, love, love, love a good grovel. So I'm going to keep reading some more of the grovels, um, romances with grovels in them, just because I do like them. And, you know, it's, it's, that's kind of like my kick now, I guess. You know, I got on the MC kick and i um, glad to have kicked that habit, but really um, looking forward to reading this one, you know, so we'll see what happens. But so that's what we're talking about today is good grovels. And um, again, I love one. So if anybody has any suggestions, um, I'm all up for it. But again, if you Google good grovels, like lists of books come up. So anyway, but I'm going to go and until I see everybody again, you know, hey, happy reading. <laughs>